So my name is Reb Grebenikov Roman, and today we're going to talk about personalizing your search ranking from Elasticsearch. And what is personalization? And for me, personalization and when uh, the same query in the same context will get different ranking for different visitors based on their past behavior. It is quite typical for e-commerce, but it's not only valuable for e-commerce. For example, for content websites, it might be valuable to show cats to cat lovers or personalizing an algorithmical feeds of social networks or maybe some advertisements ranking. Uh, and from our own experience for like from uh, for people building personalization for different companies, personalization works from the business perspective. From these numbers are our internal A-B test with different customers, and it not depends on vertical. It's just somehow works. But while building personalization experiences for different websites, we feel a strong sense of deja vu because even the verticals, the sides, the goals are different from the te technical core of the problem is usually the same because it's just hard to make an online real-time personalization because you need to have a giant pile of uh, data uh, uh, processing pyramid ready for you. So you need to have data processing, extract features to compute some complicated stuff on top of that, have some feature store. And then there is a chair on top of that pie for the personalization. And we're not the only one who has this feeling. So there is an article from Airbnb how they did personalization personalized search and they spent like a year building it on multiple iterations. And what if you also want to have a uh, personalized search, but you don't have a year, but you still can do the same way, start from scratch, building this pyramid, take Elasticsearch, implement all the data processing stack uh, on the side with Spark Python. You can also go to some uh, companies from the internet doing personalized search for you, but then you will lose control over the development of your search. And then you will also lose control of your own data because you need to stream it somewhere through the internet. And who knows what will happen with it. <clears throat> Is there some sort of a compromise between these two approaches? Because uh, from the technical perspective, different personalization projects having usually kind of the same model at clicks impressions there is some metadata we do some feature extraction if we are online uh, like in e-commerce it's also kind of the same we do the same data pre-processing for the features the replaying bootstrapping and we just slap lambda mart as a best uh, state-of-the-art method of doing learn, learn to rack on top of that and just call it a day and we decided not to reinvent the wheel yet another time and make an open source tool called MetaRank, which tries to automate all the data engineering part of data preparation for the learned rank. And it's an open source, so Apache to license, it's a single jar file, you can just run it. You don't need Kubernetes cluster to do a hello world. And MetaRank itself is just a short path across this pyramid of data engineering pain of personalization, which is implementing just a very narrow subset of all the layers. So you can just achieve this personalization goal. It's not a general purpose feature store or data processing. It's not even a framework. It's just an application. There is no place to type your code in Python because it's like declaratively configured. And from the bird's eye of view, MetaRank is a secondary ranking system. Uh, so it's it won't replace Elasticsearch for you. You still, uh, so for acquired genes, you take top 1,000 matching products from Elasticsearch and throw them to MetaRank and it will reorder them according to the feedback it received before uh, for, uh, from the customers. And to base this predictions, not only on the real time events coming from the customers, but also for the, based on the traffic history you have. And it's not a magic, it's just built on the kind of typical for 2022 approach of feature store when you have some offline feature processing, online feature processing, they're joined in the feature store, you just train your model and call it a day. And uh, to start, you only need to have not so many things like just the historical data of your traffic dumps so it can be processed and uh, computed. You so also so need some sort of configuration on how this uh, historical events are mapped into the machine learning features. You 
export the training data set, train your model, and switch to online mode. We're never tried to implement the wheel. We're using Apache Flink and Redis just to do all the online part. And the example, event examples MetRank consumes is like this. So there are multiple types of events, but they are kind of the same. So just some fixed amount of fields and uh, just some flexible amounts of fields describing the metadata events, the way items are expressed to the customers and how customers interacted with these events, with these items. And the core of the meta rank is actual is feature extractors. So we're uh, trying to implement most common uh, ways to transform some e-commerce or some other types of events into the machine learning features which can be used for personalization and then they are added to the feature store and then served for the inference and model training and just a couple of examples of what metabrand can do for you is like some something something easy is to just take a number from an uh from an event as is or maybe do a one hold encoding of a low cardinality field, for example, genders for movies, or compute a word count of a title field of an item, or you can do like engram between the title and the, some other field or query. You can also do some sort of special transformations, for example, parse a user agent field from the impression event and extract and one hold encode on mobile, desktop, and tablet category uh you can also do some counters for example how many clicks were made for this customer within this session or my number of purchases made in the past but it won't work for products because you need time windows and we also have time windows implemented so it will be like how many clicks were made in 7 14 30 and 60 days and uh you can also do customer profiling, uh, for example, like that this, this customer clicked on red products before, or do some sort of rates, like uh, dividing a number of clicks to number of impressions and calling it a CTR, or the same thing with conversion with purchases. And do also number normalization. The current status of MetaRank is it's kind of an alpha. We're using still it for some projects. We have a demo available, so we can click, but don't crash it because I'm not sure that it will handle all the traffic. Uh, and we have a large, large backlog of things we need to implement. But we actually implemented MetaRank to solve our problems, so we won't reinvent the wheel yet another time on our next project. But we think that it can be useful for other people. That so play with this tool. It's available ah, also star us on GitHub. And uh, the tool is available on GitHub. You can talk to us and describe your use cases and help us develop it if you feel that it can be available for you. So that's it. Thank you very much.